at uh, USC's Norris Medical Library. And my colleague, uh, Hannah Skilbert, is going to be driving the chat and, and answering any questions or whatever that come up. Um, I think I'd like to just uh, go through the content uh, pretty quickly, and then we'll save questions and comments and everything for the end. Do want everyone to know that the session's being recorded for later viewing. So if, um, you know, just so everyone's aware that that's okay, that we're recording the session. So uh, you've come to here today to learn about some health sciences, free resources that are out there on the web. Um, and I also wanted to uh, just kind of, you, you might be someone who is graduating professional school right now, or you may be uh, staff or faculty who are interested in open access resources in the health sciences area. So I'm just gonna walk you through some of the resources that we have available and uh, kind of tell you, tell you what's out there. So our learning objectives for the short session is just to identify some strategies for gaining access to health sciences journals or databases that you're interested in or specific articles that you might be trying to get when you no longer have university affiliation um, and also identifying free authoritative clinical evidence-based medicine, statistical, mobile, and consumer health information. And then also just familiarizing yourself with some tools to critically assess health information online as well. So uh, I wanted to draw your attention really briefly to a new thing we have up here, which is the, um, we have a USC Libraries research guide regarding coronavirus. Um, and everything on this guide is all free open access authoritative information about coronavirus. So if anyone is interested in that particular area, there is a lot of new resources that are available, including a lot of open access kind of research portals that are available from either government organizations or the kind of major publishers that have made their uh, access to this content free and open for the time being at least. Uh, there's even a whole database from the National Library of Medicine called like COVID that is just about uh, open access information about the coronavirus. So I just wanted to sh to show to draw that attention um, to to that resource. Uh, so that's libguides.usc.edu/coronavirus, and you can see also there are there are ebooks and. Uh, things from up to date in Dynamed and Johns Hopkins, and then um, up here as well, there's some useful links to patient information for different kinds of patients and patient education videos about coronavirus. Um, and then there's also the, your USC and local information uh, hubs about coronavirus. Just wanted to give you that. Then. We're going to go to our main uh, resource here, which is also uh, Live Guides. It's liveguides.usc.edu slash health sciences slash free resources. You can also search for it on our, our research guides on our website. Uh, just using the word free, you can usually get to it pretty quickly. And so these research guides are made by librarians and everything on the guide is free. And it's also continues to be updated. So with a lot of free research online, sometimes uh, these databases get sunset or, or you know, go away. Those, uh, then our librarians will be updating these lists. So it's good to kind of know or bookmark these lists so that you can see what's out there in these different areas because they do change sometimes. So uh, I did want to take a quick moment to talk about how to find things free when you don't have university affiliation. You do have, it, although this uh, information is written for when libraries are physically open, it's good to know when libraries do reopen what some of your options are. At USC Norris Medical Library, there is a walk-in public station. It's at the front of the library when you first walk in. Um, there is a, you can go to the circulation desk and ask to use the public station. It's, it's a seated station and they will open it and you can get access to all of our resources, but you know, depending on availability of who, who might be, uh, if there are people waiting for the station, um, it's, 
you know, how long you might be able to use that, but it is, we do have one station that is available for that use and you can print from that station and you can also save uh, articles onto a drive from that station if you want. So that is an option available on the Health Sciences campus at USC once the campuses are, are open again. There are also uh, availability at U UCLA Biomed Library has walk-in stations. Um, if you're on the west side, that's a good option. And uh, here, there are some links and information from um, what's a, about how to get access to certain articles or books uh, that are health sciences related or not from Los Angeles Public Library. Um, there, there are some fees involved with some of these services, but they do exist. And also Los Angeles County Library. Uh, there's also two really cool um, browser extensions that are useful. Uh, one's called Open Access Button, and the other one is called Unpaywall. And you can install these on your browsers. And I think one is just for Chrome, uh, but the other one I think is, is open to some other kinds of, uh, of browsers. And you can install it, and then when you go to an article page, you can click the button and it will try to find you a, a legal, free, open access version of that article. So otherwise, uh, on campus library access uh, for alumni, you do not get remote access to USC Libraries electronic resources once you've graduated. Um, when libraries are open, there are some things that are available for you to use. Um, but mostly, I think that people will mostly be wanting to use electronic resources, and there are a lot that are free and open available online, and I can show you some of them. Now, I know for those who are in the health sciences um, or health sciences students, you're all familiar with PubMed. But I wanted to show you a the new PubMed because it is uh, it, it is launching. It will look like this for everyone within you know two weeks or so from now. Uh, how to use PubMed most effectively when you no longer have PubMed at USC when you no longer have that USC uh, um, affiliation and the articles that you get from that. So this is the new PubMed, and I'll just do a quick search for diabetic foot. And so you'll see when you get your results list, there are a number of filters that are available, and I had already selected. It remembers your selections on the new PubMed, so uh, it remembered my selection for free full text. So you'll see, you know, if I unclicked it, I would get 15,000 results. But if I click free full text, then I get 3,000 results, but that's better than nothing, right? And um, you'll also see it here in this sort of orangey color, there are distinctions about why the article is free. So it might be a free a PMC, which is PubMed Central article, which I'll go more into, uh, or it's a free article. It's not indexed in uh, PubMed Central, but this is an article from a journal, an Italian journal of uh, cardiovascular surgery that's just an open access journal and it's always free. You can also then um, click down to article types and you can get find book and document content. So this is a uh, this is a lengthier work of guidelines and things about dealing with diagnosis and management of diabetic foot from the American Diabetes Association. So there are a number of resources like that as well available in PubMed. Now so say I want to get article, get um, um, alerts about book content or, you know, just unclick and just all content dealing with diabetic foot that is available to me that might come out that's uh, free full text. I can create, click here to create an alert and then um, it will allow you to create to send emails in whatever way you want about searches that you're interested in. And it will apply the filter of free full text. And so when you're up here, uh, this is used to be called, and I think it's still kind of is called my NCBI, but it's sort of a little cleaner looking. You can see I'm logged in as myself and the dashboard is the old uh, my NCBI. And you can see here, 
that you can, um, you have saved searches that you can have and you can set them to be free full text. So that's a nice option. And then also I mentioned PubMed Central. This still looks the same as it used to look and I don't think it's going to change. But there you can see these are the um, figures for how many journal articles that are open access are uh, archived in PubMed Central. So everything that you find in PubMed Central is open access and free. So if you just start searching PubMed Central, then that is uh, one way to do it as well. Now, there are some other resources that health sciences folks might be a little less familiar with that I'd like to draw your attention to. So the one of the big ones is called DOAJ or Directory of Open Access Journals. We've got uh, 14,000 journals uh, that are searchable and this is really a international database um, and it covers all disciplines but there it also specifically covers health sciences content. Um, the community of DOAJ has been around for decades at this point and they review and add and remove journals for quality all the time. And so if I did a similar search in diabetic foot, just see what I could find. You'll see I've got, you know, more, re more results than I got in, um, actually no, it's fewer results than in PubMed, but uh, you can then also filter down to those articles that are specific to medicine or in a specific discipline within medicine or nursing, for instance. And then there's a filter, uh, does it have the DOAJ seal, which means that it's like extra special vetted and approved um, for quality. You can do that. And you can also see what publishers are, have these, um, uh, have this research available. So if you trust a certain publisher more than another, you can narrow down that way as well. So in addition to that, there are a ton of other databases that you have access to freely on the web that can meet your needs for, for journal articles. So you've got a um, core is a search engine for open access research papers. Then there are a lot of, of search uh, of databases that lead you to preprints. So a preprint is a version of an article that the author has made, but it has not gone through the peer review process yet. So something important to keep in mind, but it is uh, even after a peer reviewed copy of an article is published, an author still has rights to share their preprint if they want which also means um, if you find, if there's a specific article that you really want and you can't find it, you can actually uh, email the author and ask whether you can have a preprint version and it's legal for you to ask and it's legal for them to share it with you. Um, that is also one of the functions that is available on some of those um, open access button and unpaywall. They can help try to connect you with the corresponding author in order to ask for a preprint version of, of that article as well if they can't find it elsewhere in one of these repositories. And then some of the other clinical, you know, information tools about guidelines and drug information. There are a few available from various entities that are open access. Some are really broad, some are really specific. You know, you can find images that you can use uh, for a publication or, or in presentations that are open access and free. There are different elements of evidence-based medicine um, and specific different disciplines that are available on this guide. I'd like to point out NCBI Bookshelf is, you know, the same entity that runs PubMed and PubMed Central. You can search just for textbook style content that is open access in the life sciences and healthcare uh, using the NCBI Bookshelf. For patient education, our biggest recommendation is usually towards Medline Plus. It's a really robust, uh, you know, antidote to a WebMD or some of the other uh, sites that might have ad content. Uh, this is also from the National Library of Medicine. There's great information about wellness and drugs and um, conditions in English and in Spanish available for free. Uh, that's a really great resource. Up to date. 
is not a free resource at all, except they, their patient education area is free. And that's a little known fact. I think that is good to know. So you can go get their patient education information you know, drugs and diseases, and, and that's available free to everyone. So I'll show you some of the other things that we have available on this guide. Got a list of various websites that are authoritative health websites, either from the US government or international uh, sources, and also some local government websites. There are a number of health statistic resources that are open access and they're are broken down by all different kinds of sliced and diced all different ways about, you know, finding stats by location or population group or health topic. We have a lot of mobile resources that we recommend that are available freely on, um, on your various platforms for getting apps. And you can kind of drill down into, oh, I want to find drug info or, or whatever. So those are some nice resources there. There's also uh, some of this information can be helpful if you want to share with patients or if you want to share with, you know, family members or uh, they're really great t uh, tools for evaluating health websites for trustworthiness available from the National Network of Libraries of Medicine and also Medline Plus, like I mentioned earlier. Um, the, and there are some interactive tools where you can, if you have a website up where you found an article about a health topic and, and someone wants to go through and try to assess whether this is something they should be trusting, there, you can actually click through different steps to, to decide whether you want to trust that or not. There is a, um, a link to a presentation here about uh, for people who want to publish in open access uh, in open access journals about how to make sure that that journal is not um, a potential predatory journal. And I also like this infographic here that has this handy mnemonic for assessing health apps for, for being um, trustworthy. And then for clinicians, there are a lot of open access tools for appraising more rigorous kind of uh, health information so you can click on some of these, like from Joanna Briggs Institute. There are checklists for if you were assessing uh, a case report, does it include X, Y, Z, a cohort study, a systematic review. These are pretty useful and open to everyone. And then, finally, I just wanted to, it, this is not currently on the guide, I might add it, um, but I just wanted to show another resource that a lot of folks might not be familiar with. This is the um, National Network of Libraries of Medicine. There is a ton of continuing education recordings, um, live classes and recordings of classes. Some of them are geared specifically towards medical librarians, but a lot of them are just information about different resources that are out there that are, you know, open access. You can see there's a lot of different categories um, for, you know, healthcare providers. You can narrow down to healthcare providers. All of these are open to watch. Some of them are really nice deep dives into certain uh, kinds of content that you might want to you know, if you want to spend some time, some of your quarantine time learning about these things, it's really great. You know, here you can see some health resources for sexual and gender minorities. Um, there's a lot, you can see there's a lot that's available here from the uh, National Network of Libraries of Medicine to show you that. Um, so that was everything I wanted to show you on the guide and I'm really happy to just then answer any questions anyone might have in chat. There's no questions in chat yet, but um, 
please. Oh, I, I think maybe I see one. Oh yeah, Amy has a question about, um, will the recording be accessible later? Yes, we're gonna put it on this guide. Yeah, thanks, great question, Amy. So yeah, I'm going, I haven't decided where on the guide I'm gonna put it yet, but uh, when the recording is available later, I will uh, put it up somewhere prominently on this free resources guide. Oh, and another thing, um, when you're looking at this guide, uh, if you scroll down to the bottom, you can see when the guide was last updated. So you can see, them, you know, it was updated just a few days ago. So that's great. Um, these are really good, even if you find other similar guides that are on other, you know, library web pages. A lot of us use the same system for doing this, and you can tell how recently the content has been updated. So that helps you know whether it's, you know, as up to date. Um, as possible, or if it hasn't been looked at in a couple of years, maybe some of those resources might be a little out of date. So. Uh, someone has a question about will you um, be able to send out the link for the NML um, training site? Yeah, maybe I put it in the chat right now. I think what I may do, I can put it in the chat right now, and I think what I may do is just add a tab to this guide after we get off today, and it'll have training. And I'll put the NNLM training and also the recording for this session. So let me get in the chat there. Send that to everyone. Thank you. I'll also throw the coronavirus guide in the in the chat in case anyone wanted that one. We're, I'm constantly up, updating that as well. And the only information that I'm putting on this guide is open. Yes, thank you for your question. Um, so how do we get to these live guides? Excellent question. Okay, I am going to the home page right here. So this is the home page for all of USC libraries, libraries.usc.edu. If you go to the, if you're used to going to the Norris Medical Library homepage, you can also get there even faster, right? But if you scroll down, so, there are a few different ways to get there. Um, I tend to go just like click on one of these to get to the health sciences ones, but that's sort of, you know, uh, maybe a little backwards. So let's see, is find research guides. So this is all of the research guides from USC libraries. You can see there are a lot um so if i just type in free as a search you can see there is a health sciences free resources so this is like the individual page and this is the greater page i just click on that to get to that similarly and so if you were looking for something specific in this guide you can also search within the guide when you're on the page and these are the crumbs that get you there right so it's like usc libraries research guides this is in the health sciences section. It's health sciences free resources, and this is a sub page on it. Um, if we go back to the research guide, and I just want to, you know, type like COVID, then I can find the coronavirus. There are a few other ways to get there, but that's a that's a good one. Um, from Medical Library homepage. Health Sciences Research Guides is right there. And that will just show you the sub 
subset of subjects that are health sciences related and you can search within the group and get there quicker because it's not searching all of the guides, but they're all within the same system. So I hope that made sense. <laughs> There or did I miss any chats or something? I don't think you missed any chats. I think yes, you ad asked addressed all the questions that were asked so far. Great. All right. Um, well, thanks everyone for attending today, and I will um, get this up on the free resources guide as soon as it is available. Thank you so much.